when fear drives my decisions, I don't make good decisions. Of course, the challenge we face is that all of us find ourselves at points in our lives where we are afraid, all of us. In fact, we can't always help the feelings of fear that creep into our hearts or that jump into our hearts when there's a real threat. In the same way that we can't help if someone sneaks up behind you and speaks and startles you, we can't help that immediate response. Fear is in all of us. And so we face that challenge of of how do we acknowledge that in the face of danger, fear isn't always a totally irrational, nor is it always a sinful response. But how do we proceed forward as we walk with Jesus Christ in a way that we're not overwhelmed by fear to the point that it keeps us from following God where he wants us to go? When was the last time in your life that you said, God, I'm going to follow you and trust you wherever you lead, even if it entails risk? I'm going to follow you where you lead, even if it entails some risk to my reputation even if it entails some risk to my bank account, even if it entails some risk, maybe even to the success of my kids down the line. How do you make decisions in your life? How much of our lives is arranged around our fears rather than around the power and the promises of God? That's what I want us to explore this morning. And what Joshua and Caleb choose to do at this moment is what God would call us to do anytime we face these fears is to say, I want you to remind yourself of the facts of who God is and what God has promised. That if Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. If the scripture promises that the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead gives life to our mortal bodies and lives within those who trust in Jesus, And we say the facts on the ground that matter the most are that God has given us all that we need for life and godliness, and Jesus will never leave us. So I don't make decisions simply by what my eyes see. All of us are susceptible to the voices around us. So I want to ask this question then. Who are the voices you listen to? Who are the voices you listen to? Are you surrounded in your life by men and women who remind you of the power and the promises of God? Or are you surrounded by men and women of cynicism? Do you listen to voices in the world that are cynical, that are doubtful? Or do you listen to the voice of God's Word? We choose who to listen to. This is why the scripture challenges us right here to connect with the body of Christ. This is why the early church met together every Sunday to worship God, to celebrate communion together, to sing songs of truth and praise about who God is. The reason is this, because every week we need to sit with a group of people who remind us of what is true. Because throughout the week, we are with a group of people often who give us a different voice. Right, God says, look, yeah, you, you can live a safe life. You can protect what you have. You can say, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I know Jesus. I come to church at least one out of every three or four weeks. I'm here. I'm good. And you'll be fine. Because you don't know what you're missing. The men and women who stood on the border of the promised land, they didn't understand what they were missing out on because they chose to listen to voices of fear. They chose to see a certain set of facts a certain way. 